Um, my name is Beth Eichmann. I teach in the Honors Program. And our first speaker today is Dominic M. Wally. And his advisor is Dr. Lee Single. So please welcome Dominic. Thank you all for being here. You guys can hear me. Um, so some of you today in the audience, you're seniors kind of looking for your next role at going into the summer, your juniors looking to apply for your next internship, or maybe your freshman, sophomore, and you really have been embarked in that process. Today, I'm here to give you a little bit of info on accounting and technology and what kind of jobs look like after graduation for that. I'm here to give you some tips and tricks on finding jobs and opportunities as you move forward. And then lastly, I want to provide you with some comfort and clarity as you move through the whole process as it can kind of get stressful sometimes. My name is Dominic Nimmo, and I'll be presenting on why can't I get a prestigious job, the hard truths, and the action steps for recent graduates. So first, a quick overview. The motivation, I'll go through the motivation behind this research. The key terms that will kind of help you guys understand this a little bit better. The literature review, uh, what the research said about professional development for students. The labor statistics that are out now for uh, what it looks like as we graduate. Uh, the interviews that I conducted. Uh, questions that you might have or, or coming up in your head as we go through this presentation. And then lastly, some of you already have, but I'll be providing with that how-to guide to walk out of So first, the motivation. motivation. I always wanted to start my own business, but I didn't know where, when, how, or what it would look like at all. When I was a freshman, I was the kid who would sit at the career and development office. I'd constantly be redoing my resume or, or on LinkedIn, kind of looking through that. And I noticed that other students didn't really, they didn't really put themselves out there. They just had a little bit of a trouble, right, just stepping out of their dorm room, maybe having a conversation with someone else. So I wanted to be that person where they could have an informal call. They could text me, hey, Don, what do I say about this interview? Can I get a, can you look over my resume really quick? I wanted to be that person they came to. So thankfully enough, I was able to start my own uh, LLC out of the state of Ohio, which, I'm, which is where I'm from, called the Exodus. So the key definitions that I wanted to go over really quickly. Internship, an internship is a professional um, arrangement where you get the chance to go ahead and get some professional experience before you graduate. This can be in the term of uh, three months during the summer, it can be during the school year, but it's a chance for you to write, you, you join a company, a firm, and you get to see what you like. Maybe you like that role, maybe you don't, and you, and you continue on and you try something else. And that's just professional development. And this is something that you hear a lot now, and it, 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 it's a new term, but it's just a, it's about going out there and maintaining the credentials to stay in the role you are at, right? You're constantly keeping up on industry trends. You're connecting with other individuals. You're looking back on your resume every once in a while, and, and you're continuously moving forward. Next is prestigious employment, and really where I wanted to start my research. So it, it breaks down. I broke it down into two segments: the accounting and technology side. Big four are the four public accounting firms that audit SEC clients, for, which are public companies. And you have over around, at one of the firms called Deloitte, you have a 4% chance of getting a job there after graduation, which hence where the prestigious employment comes into the terms. And then Big Tech, these are firms that you've probably already heard about. This is Amazon, Google, Facebook, and, and Netflix is, new, is even in there. And at Google, you have under a 1% chance of getting a job at, after graduation. So that's where these uh, two sections fall in the prestigious employment. Next is the literature. I put constantly evolving literature out there is because right when I started this research, I came into a problem, right? I kept seeing the word apprenticeship and a lot of old terms that in the academic journals that I was researching, and they were all from 10 to 15 years ago. They really didn't go ahead and address right the current internships and, and how do you do this. Everything was quick, quick uh, one-page LinkedIn articles, and it was hard to write how are you going to build a solid research foundation off of one-page articles, right? So I had to address that, and I addressed that with the two following sources, right? I used CompTIA, and it was basically a 150-page published journal of every state, city, section broke down for the technology industry. It showed me that the net tech employment upon graduation is going to be around 11 million, so those jobs coming out. And then I went ahead and used the AICPA, which is, they release every year a supply and demand for group graduates in the accounting. Right? So what does that industry look like? Where are the current trends in the accounting market? And that really helped me solidify my research. 
So next, this is what the research said about professional development for students. The first thing I really wanted to harp on was LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the, fa is the Facebook for professional development. This is a place where you can, right, you build your own bio, you build your own profile, you have your roles that you've connected with, or that your roles that you've completed, and then you can go ahead and connect with, right, it might be an old coach, it might be an old professor, or one of your previous bosses, right, you can connect with them and kind of keep that relationship moving forward. Next, I wanted to touch on resumes. Resumes were really important, and in the research it showed that this is your 10 to 30 seconds to impress your employer, right? You're gonna have all your roles, your education on there, and for college students, it recommended that it was one page, but this is actually the only, right, this is your first impression of, of 10 to 20 seconds, and being on the other side where I had the chance to screen resumes for interns and even full-time employers, that is, it's completely true, right? You look at a resume, Oh, do, do I like something I see in the first 10 to 15 seconds? And, and if not, you kind, of, you kind of get past it to the side. So moving on to St. Edward specific, I wanted to touch on two things here. The first one was professors, right? For where we are in our situation, our professors are easily accessible compared to at a much larger school, right? I'm able to walk into a professor's office most of the time, and if not, I can send an email maybe an hour or two before, right? And I can go in there and I can say, Hey, do you know anyone who works at this company? Do you know anyone that can connect me with this individual? What do you recommend I do with my major, right? It's that one-on-one -on -one basis that we really get here. Second, I wanted to touch on the career fair. The career fair is one of the uh, big things, right, where we're not one of 500 students lining up at one table that you'll see at big schools. We're not all wearing the same suits. We, we come up to the table here at St. Ed's and we're about one to 75 students that visit that table today, that day, and we get the chance to really impress that recruiter, right? We get to make them know who we are and then keep that conversation. So this is, these are kind of the later statistics that I pulled up, and you can see that these are the, the most new jobs with the bachelor's degree after graduating college for the next 10 years. So right, these are where the roles are headed. And I wanted to go ahead and highlight, right, this is the big four, these are those accounting firms, uh, accountants and auditors, that's where I will be next year as an accountant and auditor in, in that section. And then you have your management analyst and financial manager. These are roles that fall into the big four. And then for big tech, you have computer system analysts and you have software developers and applications. So you can see that these two industries, right, these two sections of, of firms and companies really, right, they're, they're kind of, they dominate right up there with the roles that are coming in the next 10 years. Next, moving on to accounting specific. So reviewing that, uh, that journal was awesome, and it was really a great source for me, and it surprised me in many ways and had a lot of great things to say. The first thing was number of candidates taking the CPA is the lowest, is the lowest in 10 years for 2018, which it, you can look at it a couple different ways, but what the research said, and I really like this viewpoint, is that the CPA is now special. This is a, a certification that you get after completing your accounting degree. And now going to apply with those, to those prestigious firms and those big four firms with the CPA, right, you're, you're automatically right a step ahead of other candidates when you have that certification. They ask CPAs to demand your professional development. No longer can you go to work and just sit at your cubicle, get all your work done and leave at five, right? This is a time now in the accounting industry where you have to come to work, you have to network with other individuals, you have to perform for the client, and then at some point when you get to a certain level, you're gonna have to be selling the work. Right? So you still have to be able to network and, and, and kind of get your way in there to sell work. Next, the, AC, the AICPA wants to connect with colleges earlier, which would be, I thought this was awesome because I didn't learn too much about the CPA, the specific requirements until junior year, right? I, I might've saw the acronym in, in my first accounting class, but I didn't really know what, what it all meant until my junior year. And now if they're coming to the colleges earlier, right, that's a greater chance to see the, the number of people taking the CPA go up and, and more accounts. So now I'm a technology specific. So I wanted to break it down into technical and business professionals to show you that right, it, it really does apply to everyone. Technical aspect is gonna be your software developer and people are really deep into it, very tech, smart technical people, it's not saying the other side isn't smart, but on the business professional side, this is gonna be the customer success. These are the people who are gonna be traveling to the client, making sure, right, answering that, that correspondence and making sure everything is, is moving there. I also wanted to know that Texas lands in the top 10 gains for net tech employment and innovation, right? And that net tech means both business professionals and the te technical side. And right, my biggest point here is that the jobs are here, right? You can see with Apple moving into Austin, you can see with the big 
G on, on the building down there that Google is here, right? These jobs are coming here and they're here for our students to go out there and obtain. Next, I wanted to show that, right, imagine you'd be graduating college and seeing, right, that you can obtain, right, $80,000 in, in, in your first year out of college, right? That's something that, that is pretty huge and pretty special and, and classifies this as a prestigious job, right? And this compares to all other occupations coming in at 40, right? And it, and it means that you don't have to be a part of this technical group specifically, right? Of course, this technical side might make a little bit more, but at these big tech firms, you're still, you're still in that same, you're still in that same. So the interviews, this is one of my favorite parts of the research. I had the chance to go out and interview seven professionals who work at the big tech and big four firms. I used the Nebibo 12 data analyst application and where you can upload all the interviews and kind of code them. And so I coded them using the Nebibo nodes on the 10, around the 10 questions that I asked them. I asked them all the same 10 questions. It was about the full-time aspects of their job, the intern qualities, uh, the types of interns that they had worked with. It was about their internship experience in general, the recruiting process, tips for college students, and sort of a how did you get to where you are at question. What did I learn? I learned that when you step into these big firms, you can't be arrogant. And they blatantly said that. All the candidates said that that was a bad quality of the interns they worked at. You have to kind of show up at these firms and act as if you are a sponge, right? You try to soak up all that information. You can't possibly start walking around like, right, you know everything and you know how this is done. You really need to be a sponge. Secondly, I learned that at those big schools, you are at quite the advantage at the UT, at the Ohio State, at the Boston College, where I interview, interview people. Those, they have, uh, those firms, the big tech and before, they're coming directly to the college, right? That doesn't really happen often here at St. Edwards, so we have to work a little bit harder uh, to, do, to get to these firms. What shocked me, five of the seven candidates said that grades and networking did it for them. Right? So some of you may be seniors in here and you really haven't had an internship experience or haven't had a chance to get out there. That's fine, right? These people are at these prestigious firms and they're showing you, right, that the grades did it for them and also, right, going out there a little bit and just networking. They didn't do, you don't have to do 10 internships to, to be a part of one of these big firms. And that's kind of the point I wanted to bring up here. Also, what shocked me is that uh, all the candidates said that they wish they had another internship experience. And in my head, I was thinking, why would you want another internship experience? You've landed yourself at one of these big firms. But they just wanted a chance to go out there and, and get that short little chance of, that short little opportunity to go ahead and learn a different, right, a different solution at their workplace and, and kind of get more experience. So questions you might have in your head right now as you're thinking about the research. Do I need to obtain prestigious employment? No, not at all. This was something that I really wanted to research. I wanted to see what it looked like for accounting and technology students after graduation, and I wanted to show St. Edward students that they were fully capable of getting to this point. Aren't business majors the only one who need to keep up? Only ones who need to keep up with this? Not at all either. I was sitting on the couch the other day with one of my good friends, and he's a uh, chemistry major. And he looks at me and goes, "Don, can, can you help me answer this email?" I, I have. Uh, a professor wants me to come intern for him. I, I don't really know what to say next. And right, I was able to go ahead and help him out, but it just showed right in my head and, and when I was making this presentation that this applies to everything. <laughs> what do I do, do now? I think the biggest thing is that you go ahead and address the social pressure, right? How I mentioned lining up for the career fair tables, right? There's a little bit of pressure to have internships, and it de definitely does get competitive. Accept it and really move on and kind of find some action. Do a quick Google search, right? When you go home today or after this presentation, just look up what does your major correspond to after graduation? What does the median salary look like? Just be aware of where you are at and where you're at. Relax, I think that's something I wish I could have done more and I, I, I hope all of you do more, is to take, take time and realize that everything's gonna work out in the end, right? If you can, going into my next one, if you can find the small steps, finding those action steps, Maybe after this you go and you email one professor and you apply to two jobs and then you connect with two people on LinkedIn at that firm, right? You're, you're finding the small steps that are going to lead into something a lot bigger. So to end this and we kind of wrap this up, I, on some of the uh, seats up here, I, I created a how-to guide with quick action steps of, of what you can do next. It covers resumes and LinkedIn and it's something you guys can walk out of here with and if you don't get one, feel free to contact with me. I'm, I'm sure I'll be posting that after this. Thank you so much for Dr. Singo for, for helping me out through this research. All my friends who supported me con consistently and my advisors and teachers 
who are here. It's been an awesome time. Honestly, I would say it is the one right now. And so this, this past summer, I had the chance to do the Big Four internship. And I, and I got to travel, and I got to do all, all that great stuff. But what I noticed, and what really matters, is how important the people are that you work with. This semester, I'm working with a great group of people here at a local firm in Austin. And, we've, and it's funny, everyone, uh, there's one person on the team from Texas A&M, everyone else is from St. Edwards, and we just have some of the greatest times. And I didn't interact with these people when they were, I mean, a couple are older, one's at one grade above me, but it's just, it's funny how much the people matter and how much uh, work you need to done when, those, when you work well together. It's definitely changed in the way I wanted to see it change. When I got here as a freshman, I remember applying to those big four and those big tech firms and receiving the same denial emails every year, every year. Hey, you're no longer going to look at your resume or something like that. And now, as a senior, I just attended. I just attended an event at the accounting retreat where, right, those big four firms were here. Right, they were here. They they were making an effort to come see see St. Edward students, and I think. Right, as the Apple comes in, as, as the Google, and they start to realize the talent that is here at St. Edwards, right? You get, a, you get a different kind of student here with, with the liberal arts education and a different background. So I think it's changing in, in a great way. And I think that these prestigious firms are going to start coming to our university more, and I, and I can only just see it going up. So you, could, you recommended relaxing, especially for younger students, or students who are just starting out. What are the things that you kind of worried about that you think maybe you can tell somebody else, oh, I didn't really have to worry about that so much. I could just let it go and move on to X, Y, or Z. I think it was applying to too many, I think the thing that I preach now and I wish I would have changed was applying to too many positions, right? There were times where I would pass up hanging out with some of my, my greatest friends here at the university and just, right, I'd sit in my, in my room in my dorm and, and apply to jobs, right? And with no, with no sight, right? So I, I would, if you're gonna apply to jobs and apply to, to many, right, you have a goal, you have, right, you edit your resume specifically for it. But I think that's one of the things I would, I would have done. I, now, every year when I go, when it's start to, time to start looking for a job, I write down what I want specifically, right? And I'm gonna apply to those, and then I'm gonna put it away. I'm gonna send my emails I need to, and I'm gonna make sure I put it away and kind of set time aside for family and friends. Great answer. Um, we have a congratulatory comment and a stole. Congratulations, Donna. And I just wanna say that what I really like about this research is um, that not only has Donnelly taken advantage of all the opportunities that a St. Edwards education affords, but what really makes it a very St. Edwards project is that he's now sharing what he's learned and worked so hard for with everybody else to help all his fellow students have the same kind of success. Um, and as far as the firms coming here and recruit, the reason more and more are is because the students 